Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we will be talking about the Campylobacter species and especially we will be talking about Campylobacter jejunum. Okay. And this Campylobacter species is a type of gastrointestinal micro microflora and these are pathogenic. Okay, so that's that's of serious concern because these are pathogenic. Now usually this Campylobacter is a gram negative bacteria. So it's the gram characteristic is gram negative. They are gram negative in nature and they are simply uh, they are a kind of they are having a kind of special kind of structure, right? They are carved or spiral shaped bacteria. We can call it the S shaped bacteria. So S shaped bacteria. Or spiral, so let me write or spiral, sorry, or spiral shaped bacteria. Okay, and this bacteria usually they are found in single uh, with with single polar flagella. So they are having single polar flagella. Okay, so they are having single polar flagella and this single polar flagella that means if i draw the structure so let's say campylobacter looks something like like this kind of uh, structure and it is having a single polar flagella so let me draw this this is a flagella so let me write so this is the bacteria and this is the flagella okay, so this is the structure combined okay and this bacteria as they are present in gastrointestinal line they are present in gi tract usually they are present in gi tract so as they are present in gi tract they are of micro aerophilic in nature they are micro aerophilic in nature micro aerophilic in nature okay and another important thing is that they cannot ferment carbohydrates in any form. In any form, they cannot. So let me write. Cannot ferment carbohydrates. Okay. So you know that some some of the bacteria can ferment glucose. Some of them can ferment lactose. But this type of bacteria cannot form in any of uh, this form, these things. Okay. And we can culture this kind of bacteria in special mediums. The mediums like like selective, they are called the selective medium, like blood, blood agar medium uh, containing antibiotics to inhibit the growth of other fecal uh, coliforms or fecal floras. Now, usually they are present in GI tract, so we can also find them in fecal, uh, in feces, right? So, this is another important part. So, we can find them in feces. So, usually, so they can be cultured, cultured in blood agar media. Blood agar media can be cultured in blood agar media. Media. So these are the important properties of Campylobacter species. And another important thing, as they are GI tract microorganisms, they are related with our different kind of GI tract infections. Now, as we're talking about different GI tract infections, the infections may lead to usually diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, and all these things. And definitely, they are related with fevers. And most of the case, this kind of infection. So if we are talking about this kind of infection, so GI tract infection they caused due to food or water so let me write they're due to contaminated food or water so contaminated food or water okay so these are the reasons for the infection now in the future video we'll be talking about this infection part and i hope this video is helping you because uh, and another important thing is that as they are having the flagella, they are motile in nature. So let me write, they are motile in nature. Okay, so I must talk about this. Now in the future video, we will be talking about the infection in detail. Okay guys, we have already talked about the Campylobacter uh, introductory video. Now in this video, we will be talking about the Campylobacter infection. And whenever we are talking about infection of uh, due to Campylobacter, so let me write, infection due to Campylobacter, as this type of bacteria placed uh, or generally stays in our GI tract, then these kind of infection are most of the time related with our gastrointestinal diseases. Gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal diseases. Okay, so these are the pretty, pretty common examples of gastrointestinal diseases caused by. Uh, 
Campylobacter species. Now, usually, as they are GI tract uh, related microorganisms, they are pretty uh, easily found in contaminated food source as well as contaminated water source. Now, this food and water may contain this Campylobacter species. Now, as they are present in food and source, the possible way for the contamination to spread is via 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 food that means it is via 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 our uh, food processing uh, regions as well as they can also be transferred via respiratory tract so that way they can be transferred via respiratory respiratory tract so okay so they can also be transferred via the respiratory tract okay and this kind of infection uh, is uh, can be spread using this contaminated food and water and a poor sanitation system right so these are the bad things about this because a poor sanitation system is also related with that and the type of infection caused is gastrointestinal diseases we have talked about it and the example of this kind of diseases usually results in colitis so let me write colitis and all uh, different kinds of uh, abdominal region problems and the symptoms for this kind of disease symptoms for this kind of or, or sometimes ulcers also ulcers also and this kind of disease the symptoms of the disease usually related with the diarrhea which is a bloody diarrhea bloody diarrhea okay and also it is related with vomiting and nausea and different kind of gastrointestinal distresses like like say uh, abdominal cramps abdominal cramps and also they are related with fever headache and so on so these are the different kinds of symptoms related with this campylobacter infection now, in any case of this Campylobacter infection, this kind of bacteria, as we know that these bacteria are having the motility, so they can move from one place to another place. And another important thing is, as they are living in the GI tracts, uh, so they are having a very, uh, they are having access to very less amount of oxygen. They are made uh, like that, so they are microaerophilic. That means they don't need that amount of oxygen for their survival. They can survive in very, very low oxygen content. Now, as they survive in very low oxygen content, and also they love to be in, in the GI tract regions. So uh, the the percentage the percentage of beneficial flora, beneficial flora of GI tract is very very important. Right? If we change the percentage uh, concentration of the beneficial flora in the GI tract, it will hamper and it will it will hamper them. And as a result of that, this kind of uh, pathogens will start to thrive so these things will occur eventually right so for that reason we need to be very careful about these things to, to regulate these things actually okay so in a sense that's about the infection and i hope that's helpful uh, and another important thing i must uh, I, I forget to talk talk about is that the type of infection that they are causing yeah, they are they're kind of mild infections and these infections can be fight uh, or can be fought in very few uh, few days for example two to seven days will take to solve this kind of infections in body or uh, not natural immune system is there to fight against it but most of the time the infection must uh, sometimes can be uh, what we can say merged with different infections or uh, like infections like cholera and all these things okay so in those cases we need to be uh, careful about choosing our food source as well as our water in those cases okay so we need to purify these things and then take it and then we need to kill them using antibiotics. Now how you will kill them we will be discussing in the future video which is about the treatment. Okay guys we have already talked about introductory video about Campylobacter species and also we have uh, talked about uh, the infection mode right. Now let us talk about again about the infection. The usual kind of infection uh, caused by Campylobacter species are uh, are actually acute enteritis. So let me write acute enteritis. So this is called enteritis. Uh, they also call traveler's diarrhea. Let me write, traveler's diarrhea. We know that another type of bacteria like E. coli, a type of E. coli also causes traveler's diarrhea. 
travelers diarrhea okay and the third thing pseudo appendicitis so it's not a complete uh, version of appendicitis but still it's uh, having uh, leading to the effect like appendicitis so this is also called pseudo appendicitis so these are uh, the three major kind of uh, diseases that are caused by uh, three major kind of infections that are that are caused by campylobacter species now if you are so in this video we'll be talking about treatment right so let me write it here so we'll be talking about treatment here we are talking about treatment actually now we know that uh, they can cause this three major kind of disease like acute enteritis, traveler's diarrhea, and pseudo appendicitis. In all these cases, this kind of infections are all of them are GI tract infections, right? All of them are GI tract infections, and they are related with the destruction of the gastrointestinal lining of the cells, right? So in those cases, because already there are acids that are coming out from the from stomach. Yeah, and in those cases, if it destroys the epithelial lining, it will destroy the cells eventually and our gastrointestinal tissue will start to damage, right? So, that is what is caused by this kind of Campylobacter species. Now, in this case uh, of this, this bacteria, if we are uh, taking food which is not processed perfectly, in those cases only, we need to be very, very careful about Campylobacter. Otherwise, Campylobacter is not going to cause very harm of faults in our body. Okay, because Campylobacter is can, can be added only by the food and water source, right? So, if we are talking about food, food source, it is via milk or it can be via meat, right? So, meat means poultry and all these things and also obviously egg will be a part of it. Okay, so and contaminated water is also there. So, in all these cases like milk, you can see all of this food, milk, meat and all these things they required proper processing that is very very important they require proper processing of the food if we pro process our food properly and then take it then it will reduce the risk of having this kind of campylobacter infections on it okay so for 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 this reason we need to be very careful about choosing uh, that what we need to do uh, to reduce this infection okay but if the infection is onset in those cases we can use different things we can use uh, different kinds of antibiotics right different antibiotics so antibiotics are always there but don't take it until and unless you require it and in this case what we can use we can use different macrolides kind of macrolides kind of antibiotic now among these macrolides kind of antibiotic we can use erythromycin erythromycin is, a, is in our hand so it, it is of one type and also we can use fluoroquinolones so fluoroquinolones so we can use fluoroquinolones and among the fluoroquinolones we can use ciprofloxacin ciprofloxacin so these are the two different kind of antibiotics that can be taken uh, differently to treat a different campylobacter infections okay but again i'm telling you among all the rest of the uh, gram negative uh, gastrointestinal bacteria these are not that much threatening and harmful but still it can cause a severe kind of disease but this kind of infection can be severe if they are compiled with some other kind of infection some other kind of condition in your body right your normal immune system cell can easily find them and destroy them but if it, your immune system is compromised, in those cases you don't need, you don't have any much more thing to do. So in those conditions, you you, you must be in trouble, right? Otherwise, you, need, you don't need to be very careful about all these things. Now, all of these different symptoms all together can be called as Campylobacteriosis. Okay, so there are several uh, several mild infections and all these things. But again, uh, eating or drinking properly processed food is very very important. So that is. In the prevention so proper processing proper processing is required right so if that's going on and you take it and sanitary system is well and all this thing in those conditions campylobacter infection can be prevented pretty easily and that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you